back to the channel, folks. If you've not subscribed yet, please subscribe below and hit like, watch the video, and enjoy. Please comment. I get back to the comments as quickly as possible. For the subscribers that have been here, thank you so much for being here. I truly appreciate it. Today is Motor Day, so to speak. So this series is going to be broke up into many parts because I have an engine I'll show you in a minute with really good heads, pistons, uh, stainless steel pushrod tubes, new oil pump that I got off of somebody, and I'm going to utilize the parts for my other motor. Uh, we'll end up doing a compression test in the next video on the other engine and see how good it is before I start tearing it completely down so we can fix the motor up for her and then over to winter time then I'm going to build another engine with a new block from scratch. So let's take a look. I'll show you what I got going on here. That's just a spare engine. Believe it or not, I got a lot of engines now. But this is the engine that came out of the blue parts car, if you can remember, at the very beginning of my adventure. Now, this is a good running engine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it, for except the prior owner snapped off the stud in the head for the exhaust, and no, there is no way of repairing it. So, it is what it is. I am going to do a compression test on that motor, probably in the next video or the one after, and see what kind of compression it has. It should be fine, but I'm still going to strip it down to the block and put new sills, new gaskets, everything new, freshen it up, paint all the tins, make it pretty and then take the heads from a different engine and put them on there. But here's what I'm gonna do here. I bought this engine off of a buddy real cheap. Uh, it had a damaged cam that it never got to run yet. But it has really nice heads on it, stainless steel push rod tubes, a brand new oil pump, and uh, 87 millimeter pistons that are brand new, never been run yet. So we're gonna tear this down and get the heads off of it. Uh, I do have a brand new W100 cam. Don't know what I'm doing yet with that. I was thinking on splitting this case actually and reviving this engine. So I'm still a little puzzled on which direction I'm going. So let's get into it. As you can see, but I'm gonna have to take that screw out, that screw out for the tins, unbolt the intakes. Same thing on the other side. And then we'll pull the top of that all off. Uh, this one don't have a thermostat in it. Looks like it was gutted, the uh, cooling fins. Okay, let's pull this intake off of this side. Should be using my gun, but I don't feel like messing around. ratchet will reach in here or not. Yep, it did. These are nice. I'm going to clean these up and use them. All the numbers are ground off. It has that smooth look to it. Uh, this also has uh, one and a 1.25 rockers on it. Two are brand new. Let's get this side. Yeah, these will clean up real nice. I my buddy ended up grinding all the numbers off to give it a clean look, so to speak. So I think that's pretty cool. Oh, wow, that one was tight. Okay, let's get this screw out of here. Holds the top of the, of the sides of the doghouse on. Then the other side. Mm, wow. Okay. Ten. That one was pretty tight. I like this doghouse, but I'm gonna be running heat, so can't use it on this application. Screws around the sides. Remember, if you have 
a thermostat set up on here, then obviously you're going to have to get underneath and I'll show you on an extension to disconnect all that. Okay. Easy peasy. There's your oil cooler, which you already know. We got to take these off. There's usually a screw on each one. I see that one. I'm going to have to probably retap. It's not in there. Looks like it got broke off. Ooh, nice and new. I want to clean these all up and respray. Let's go to the other side. Take these off. Going to pull the heads off. She's pretty. Okay, I'm going to take the rocker arms off first and then we'll be loosening the head up. Let me see if I can angle towards you a little bit there. 13 millimeter. Whoa. Those weren't tight at all. rocker arms off that's it to that that's all you do when you remove your push rods you should pretty much keep them in order but honestly I'm probably putting a new set of push rods in but I'll keep them in order just in case okay cylinder head removal I like to do a crisscross when I take them apart it's just me Kind of just move your way around. Can't remember which ones I did now. They should all be loose. Oh, I thought the stud was spinning. It's not. It's not. It was just me. Belwar, this is nice heads. Nice and clean. I only use these once. I have a new set. Once they smash, they're smashed. That's just me. So, you know. Alright. I got lazy. I think I'm going to uh, use my Dremel and polish the heads up on the ports. I don't know if you are interested in even watching something like that. Ooh. See what happens when you're rushing? Washer. All right. Stick around for a minute there. There we go. Here it comes. Ooh, look at them new pistons. I'm gonna clean the valves up on this head. They need cleaned and lapped. It'll make me feel better. Okay. The pistons are 86.95, so they're the 87 millimeter. 
Not sure if I'm using them yet on that motor because that motor I believe has really good pistons on it so I might be able to save these for another adventure. So let's go to the other side. That's a 13 millimeter, just in case you needed to know. And these are the one and a quarter, 1.25 ratio rocker arms. I never really ran them. Don't know what the deal is, how much you gain from it. I'll look into it and find out. Push rod tubes, I'll keep them in order for right now. Not sure why, but I will. Okay. These are all mostly loosened up. He may have planned on taking it back apart because some of them are already loose. None of them were really tight, tight. So I was more interested in the heads and the new pistons. Okay, and I want the washer. Yeah, I definitely want to clean these up. The heads look good though. I'll inspect them thoroughly, but I want to relap the valves, clean the valves up, and get that done. Yep, those will work. Okay, I started pulling these out. They just pull straight out. When you do put your push rod tubes back in, you want to pull and expand these out. So when you put your head on and tighten it, it compresses and seals the springy part. Hope that made sense to you, but it should. Oh. Nice stainless steel push rod tubes. I'm gonna use them and put new seals on them. Wow, they're in there. Woo. Okay, I got new seals I can use, so that's that. Let's get them off the other side. They are in there really good. Mm. Wow. Jeez. Okay. Wow. I'm really tempted to use these pistons. I wanted to keep it stocked for right now, but these 87s, they're brand new. They were never used yet. I'm really tempted to use these. Let's see which way we go there with it. I want to remove this pulley so I can get this oil pump out. There's a brand new one in it I'm going to use. And no, uh, that was already loose. I'm not that strong. Let's see how hard this is to get off. Comes. Oh. Okay. All right, here's the four bolts, or nuts, so to speak, for the oil pump. One thing I wanted to bring up is, you noticed I have anything hardly on this engine now, but the distributor is still in place. Do not take your distributor out. Now, I don't have the hold down on it, but don't take your distributor out, because when you're turning this or turning the flywheel, you can pop that drive gear up and out or shear the bottom of it, so to speak. So 
caution. Don't take the distributor out and then turn the engine around. Just a little tip there from Uncle Slade. All right, let's get the oil pump off. The other engine had the semi-auto stick, so I'm gonna take this brand new oil pump and put it on the other engine because they have a different style for the uh, auto stick setup. So that's the deal with that. So getting a new oil pump's good. I believe this is the 26 millimeter. I'll double check it to make sure. But this is what I needed. So it was a really good package deal, so to speak. And he did also give me a W100 cam with it. So I have that on my shelf. Here come the stud with it, which is fine. whole thing of L-ring gasket set, but why rip this? Never know if I'll need it for something. Okay, I'm going to loosen this nut up here. As you can see, I think it helps take some pressure off. Let me get a screwdriver and pry gently. Oh, there it is. You wanna loosen them up slightly. You can see there, there's one there, one there, it eases up on the block here. Let me, okay, let me get my magnet, pull the gears out. Nice and pretty, all brand new. Okay, and here it comes. Oh, here we go, okay. And I'll mic them and see, but I think they're 26 millimeter. Remember, you have this nut and bolt here, loosen that gently, just don't go crazy and take it apart, but loosen it up, loosen this nut up here, and it takes the pressure off of the case where it's together. It kind of makes it a little easier to get the oil pump out. So, okay, so the oil pump's out. Here's how to check what oil pump you have. I want a 26 millimeter. So let's pop a gear, pop a gear. Made that word up too. Okay, turn these on. Oops, zero them out. Okay, you're going to mic right here. Shaky hands. Okay, I don't know if you can see this. Let me come over here. 25.96, it's jumping around a little. That's 26 millimeters. That's what you want, or that's what I want, so, you know. Okay, let's see if my gun will take the fly off. Check this out. Check out Corey Anderson. Uh, his link's in my description, his channel. Really great guy, I've known him for a long time. Is my lens dirty? Uh, he loans me all of his specialty Volkswagen tools, which was actually probably a couple months ago. But I mean, if he needed them, he would tell me. But very nice of him to do. Let's lock the flywheel in place. You need camera view there? Yep. Okay. Just checking. Now it's seated in the teeth, so I'll just snug it by hand. I don't know if my gun's going to turn this off or not. I'll find out in a second. Hopefully it does. Oh, wrong size. go. Well, we'll see. Didn't move. Almost at the end. I didn't think my gun would do that. I bought this. 
Harbor Freight that said like 250 foot pound, what have you, and I never believed them, but this thing has been a beast. So, when that's at, there was Loctite on it, looks like, appears to be, and some grease. I'll wipe on my pants. No. It's gonna fight with me. If I can pry a little, get it off, work your way around. Don't go breaking your engine case or anything. Put my knee here so it don't go flying on the floor. Just be gentle. Don't crack your engine block. Okay, I'm going to have that flywheel cleaned up. Okay, that's all the further I need to go with this. Uh, them pistons I may use down the road. If so, all I'll do is seat the flywheel, turn a couple threads in just to turn the crankshaft to get the pistons back and forth and get them off. But no big deal. So we got uh, a good set of heads is actually what I was after. But I am gonna clean these up, polish them chambers up with a Dremel, relap the valves, and check them over. But I was told they were good heads and he wouldn't lie to me, so I'm not really concerned. But I like these dual port end castings. I'm gonna clean them up. He ground all the numbers off for a nice, clean, smooth look. And uh, oh, there's my son. My other son, my two daughters, my wife, and then there's us. Ooh. Okay, enough of that. Uh, I do have the one and a quarter rockers too. The brand new oil pump and the stainless steel push rod tubes. I got all that stuff for $200 and the brand new pistons. Can't go wrong here. And if the block's good, which it probably is, he wouldn't have saved it. Maybe it's not. I don't know. You know, I'll go over it. But hey, extra parts is always a good thing. All right. So we have our engine tore down, the parts I need off of it, everything I just showed you. Uh, what I'm going to do next is go over a few things on the other engine before I tear it down. I want to show you how the thermostat and everything works by the use of a hairdryer to test it. Because if not, you're gonna have problems if them flaps are not opening in the doghouse. I call it doghouse, fan trod, whatever you wanna call it, but uh, I keep glancing over at the motor. But uh, that'll be on the next video. But I wanted to show you what I scored for $200. The pistons alone are $200, but I needed the heads and then all the other goodies came with it, so that's a good thing. Thanks for being here. Please subscribe and share the channel and hit like. The more you hit like, the higher it goes into YouTube and people are able to see it much easier. Thanks for being here.